Hello, Internet, and welcome to the May Reading Ramble of 2022. We're almost on a year of reading rambles. That's pretty cool. The first one was in July, although there's like two months I haven't done. This video will not be cohesive, potentially more cohesive than the last. Definitely will be more editing. My goal I'm setting out with this. We're featuring a uh, messy reflection of room over on, on this side here. Um, this old blanket that I was using to prop up my shoulder. I landed on it trying to do a backflip. Yeah, that was that was fun. Half a second sends you back to three months permanent bump. More good. Uh, small PT device here, help lift the shoulder because I can't quite get it up. My son, Kirby. Kirby pajama pants. They're pretty cool. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is, again, unstructured reading ramble. What have I read this month? Talk about the channel, maybe a little bit. I sat down last night for, let's check, Toggle. 46 minutes and 11 seconds. And I wrote out some channel ethos, a little bit of a production schedule for myself. Camera quality is going to be like worse just because of how I'm recording this, but you know what I can do? Is this going to work? Well, so this here is my, in, yeah, this thing. <laughs> live editing uh <laughs> it's 10 27 it's tuesday night <laughs> i have three days left in my current job life's just great yeah this is i wrote out my ethos my reasons for the channel and i decided i still wanted to do youtube videos anyway um hopefully the new job gives me a lot more of a schedule than my current one did but the goal is a video every thursday so you know this one will start the trend if you want to get to the books i'll have timestamps here but the parkour video that's six months overdue, June 9th. Yes, I'm setting another goal. Yes, I'm saying another thing. I am moving potentially across the country this month though. So uh, yeah, delete that. Okay, getting into the actual point of this video. Please hydrate, thank you. Getting into the actual point of this video, a reading. Someone left a comment on the last reading ramble. Let's throw it up right here. And they said like, how many books do you read a, a month or do you end up reading four a month or one a week or something? And I realized that the whole tying reading to caffeine thing works so well and it's it's still working very well and i'm also just reading like on the subway i'm not taking the subway that much because i haven't been able to go to parkour i think it's really important that all of a sudden changing my focus and this was an accident i didn't intend to do this right but changing my focus from going to okay read one book a week you know break down this make the math easy 100 page book 100 divided by seven doesn't make the math easy 70 page book divided by seven and that's 10 pages a day it, then that's, that's no fun. When I tied it to caffeine, I removed the goal of one book a week. And as I read, I was just finishing books. As I can see, looking over for May, it's May 31st, 10.30 on a Tuesday, like I said. Why does it say eight out of eight? One, two, three, four, five books were read this month. I'm finishing my Hero Academia one tonight. I'll talk about Japanese today. You just, the books just finish. When you read, you just read. You know, the goal for one book a week is great and all, but I find that I don't give myself the, the freedom, I guess, to read. I don't know. The Kindle also kind of changes the game because like I'll sit down and be like, ooh, what do I want to read today? And I'll be reading three, four books at once. Like in the last three days, I finished two books, but I didn't start them both in the last three days, right? They, jumping into the books, right? The first one uh, is Dangerous Personalities by Joe Navarro. I read his book on, actually I have the Dictionary of Body Language. It's hidden behind the T, behind these two T things. I read his book, What Every Body Is Saying, because I'm obsessed with mentalism and body language. He used to work for the FBI, CIA, something. He would interrogate people, read body language. And the, the book talks about the, the four big dangerous personality types. I'm gonna say, Future Mark, do this, but in editing, I haven't edited in so long. And it's not a matter of if I want to or not, it's just a matter of like making myself do, so. it's, been a, it's, it's been a couple of months. The narcissistic personality, the paranoid personality, the emotionally unstable personality, and the predator. And then the combinations of those, what to look out for. There's this checklist at the end of each section and the checklist is like 160 items, which just shows how comprehensive it is and how comprehensive, you know, human emotions are. But it's just these things to look out for. I got a lot out of it just in the sense of like, okay, you know, these are the things to look for. I can be right about these things, but I don't need to not, I don't need to like not trust every single person I come across, right? When I'm in the airport and someone offers to help me take my bag down the thing, cause I've got one arm in a, ow, one arm in a sling and one arm carrying a, a bag and a backpack and I should let them help me. They're not gonna run away with a bag that's that heavy. I need to get a haircut. This is why I have the hat on, but I just, anyway, I read that a while ago, so I don't have too much to say. I, I didn't take notes on these or anything. The third option, uh, Mitch Rapbook, 
Vince Flynn, uh, may he rest in peace. I recently learned he passed away a while ago and that someone else has taken over the series and I hear that he's done a great job. So looking forward to continuing the series. I have, I'm like 10 pages into the next one. I've, I don't know, I, I like the thrillers. They, you know, they genuinely keep you hooked, keep you turning the page. The style of writing is, is great. I sometimes take away things from it. I'll probably say this every time I talk about a thriller or, you know, the Mitch Rapp series going forward. But if you want to read more of a know, foreign language books or more psychology books and self-help books and you know, self-help in the sense of like productivity, work management, yada, 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 I'd recommend finding a fiction book that you're into because it gets you reading. If you don't go on Netflix to watch a TV show, you're never gonna get the chance to be like, oh, that documentary looks cool. If that analogy didn't make sense, I'm sorry. I don't feel like explaining it. Oof, I'm in somewhere else today. All right, cool. Next one, Myth of Sisyphus. Uh, I finished it about a week ago. Definitely not very long. The last chapter is about the myth of Sisyphus. Don't hire me for your costume or set design. I don't like this, but then if I just... Speaking of it being a struggle, uh, it's a constant struggle. And the, the, miss, the myth of Sisyphus. The myth of Sisyphus has been uh, an incredibly important analogy metaphor for life lately for me for just so many reasons i just keep finding myself gravitating to it i think that's that's the power of i guess belief in a sense you know astrological signs i don't believe in them but if there's someone out there who is gonna read a horoscope and and believe that their day is then gonna be great because of it power to you go for it myth of sisyphus is a myth uh, and it's just one amongst many, but I keep finding myself gravitating towards it. For example, Wani Kani, it's a website that I use for, for vocab. So all my reviews stacked up tonight, didn't they? <sighs> Every time you pass a level, all of a sudden you're bombarded with a ton of le new lessons and radicals, and you get this sense of like, oh god, I gotta do it again. But yeah, you get to do it again. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Uh, the, 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 that saying makes a lot more sense having read this whole book. Definitely a book to revisit because I didn't pick up everything, but the whole notion of absurdity and living as an absurd man, I really resonated with and I kind of helped put a label or a way to think about things in a certain perspective. I've been thinking about things and it gave words to those thoughts that I haven't been able to verbalize before. Oh, it also makes me want to read Dostoevsky. That's the one note I wrote down of all the books I read. Uh, he kept referencing Dostoevsky's characters and I was like, I gotta get back into dust, dust I hipsky, man. Uh, the last one I actually finished this morning is called The Gervais Principle. Um, this book is great. It's technically available for free. Um, I'll leave a link to the Ribbon Farm blog below. Rao, the author, takes The Office, the popular show, which I'm now watching as a result of reading this book, describes this... I can't do it justice. This workplace system of hierarchies and interactions and social realities and who orchestrates who and who follows what rules. You know, I read the blog like a year ago, a year and a half ago when a friend of mine told me about it. But now I read the book, book format made it feel more real in a sense. A lot of it resonated, I guess maybe also having, now having a job. I use resonate a lot, don't I? You kind of get red pilled at, at some point. If you're into like workplace analysis slash like, he called it something specific. Like there's a specific thing. I can't, I don't know. Organizational literacy, thank you. If you're interested in that at all, it's it's worth a read. Um, if, you're, if you're an employee in like a big company, also, you know, worth a read. I don't know. I think it's super fascinating. Read the first chapter, the thing about clueless, losers, sociopath. Um, give it a shot, see what you think. Uh, and if you're intrigued, keep going. If you're not, then great. Part one is, you know, the main thing. Not in the sense of like, ooh, this is a great read, but really just, it was really interesting. I mean, wouldn't go into that area of, of book or knowledge uh, previously. Sorry, my language faculties are failing me tonight. Is that all the books I had for me? Yeah, oh, and then My Hero Academia, the, the manga. Um, gonna finish this. Check that and check it. Can you hear the, I love that sound. <laughs> Road to Sada. I left that back at home in Boston. Uh, well, with my mom. Was not able to read that. Still interested, but I'll have to pick it up when I go there in about a month. I ended on this one very particularly. You know, I stopped doing the learning logs. I have something Japanese learning related coming out in July. I'm really excited for I'm giving myself an N5 assessment and sort of vlogging the the experience of Specifically studying for a test giving myself a deadline my epiphany on who am I when I can't move Ooh, dig into language learning And so, you know, if you can't go over a hurdle go around it It's cool seeing the source material for an anime that I really enjoy going through Manga as a Japanese learner is dangerous, but helpful. I mean to start off the helpful reason is hopefully obvious. Oh, hey, I recognize that kanji. Oh, hey, you know, this is targeted for 
a young audience. But the danger is that there is a lot of slang, and so, or at least I'm learning uh, through external things, there's a lot of slang used in manga. I don't read it too deeply, you know, I don't think it's a great place for sentence mining, if that's a thing, um, and whatnot. So I, I do hesitate a little bit on reading it too closely, but it's great practice for pronouncing hiragana, katakana, um, going through the kanji. There's furigana everywhere, which is the little pronunciation for the kanji, which are the pictographic characters Japanese uses that always have different pronunciations. Yeah, and the reason, the particular reason I ended on that is because one of my books for this month, oh, this is a beautiful segue. Do I ruin it by calling it a segue? Um, actually, I haven't really sorted out books for June, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, Sun with Face, love it. June books. A while ago when I got, excuse me, I got the first two books uh, for the SAO uh, visual novels, excuse me. Say what you will about SAO, fine, I like it. The second arc obviously had its problems, okay? It's definitely very clear. I'm rewatching Alicization, no subtitles right now, and I freaking love it. I stand by that. Uh, also, the first season gave me an existential crisis, but I digress. I also have all the ReZero, not all of them. I have the first like eight ReZero books on my Kindle. A lot of the kanji I am recognizing. Am I forgetting the sounds? Sure. But one of my favorite things about learning Japanese and something with a new alphabet is just the fact that it's not a totally unknown mess anymore. Even listening to songs is amazing because I'll be able to hear the verbs and the particles and the segmentation, and it's kind of a bummer because you get to you lose the beauty of not knowing a language. I digress. Maybe I should return to learning logs. So yeah, one of the books for this month is SAO One. I don't know how closely I'll read this, but I'm pretty familiar with the story. The pictures kind of help with like I'll just I don't know. Hopefully follow the plot. My goal is to like with Alicization right now. Start this as I am. Get to the end. Oh yeah, that's still the amount of reaction. Get to the end and then be like, oh wow. I can read this much better now that I know more Japanese. Oh, by the way, finished. Just need to make a video out of it. I don't. I want to save my my commentary because I, I I'm also six months overdue on a video for this. I have to stick notes on the pages. I don't want to do like a book review video. I don't think that goes with my my channel ethos at all. Typing videos with the book as its source is, is my goal. Um, so yeah, this. What other books do I like have right now? Oh, Jekyll and Hyde, hello. For reasons I shan't go into, uh, Jekyll and Hyde, the original story, I've got on my Kindle. It's like 70 pages, so you know, no goal for reading in a specific time frame, for example. How close I'll analyze it, I don't know. Yeah, Separation of Power. That is the next uh, Mitch Rapp book. Again, I apologize that this video is long, mostly apologizing to future me editing, but whatever. You're overdue on like 20 videos at this point, buddy. Eh, rhetoric ad herenium, that can wait. Sorry, Cicero. It's kind of weird because I had those books set out and I know Jekyll and Hyde, but I haven't thought about what other books I'd get to reading. Oh, because of my job switch, there is one on Amazon that I eyed earlier. I don't remember why this came up. Who moved my cheese? An amazing way to deal with change in your work and in your life. Seems topical for me at the moment work and life wise new book that's not i don't already have great we're on a roll let's pick the next one let's pick the next one from the list of books i do have shan't we honestly either or by kierkegaard had me for a second but then i was like uh terrifying. So yeah, Seneca's Letters from a Stoke will be our fourth book. One one physical, because why not? Uh, fifth book. SAO, no gold to finish. And I'm just going to put this out there. To come back to the point I started this section of the video with, my goal is not to finish these books. Definitely not to finish this one. Eh, oh, this one's a little different. It's to start this one. There is a specific measurable goal with this. But first of all, books don't have to be finished. If you don't like a book, don't finish it. It's just a simple rule to say, okay, I know that I genuinely don't like this book if I make it five chapters in relative to the book. Chapters can be wildly different lengths. If I make it five chapters in and don't like it, I know that it's because I don't like the book. But if I constantly get 20 pages into books and keep putting them aside, then that's just like, wait, you're not giving the books a chance, you're just giving up. So for Letters from a Stoic, I mean, it's a philosophy book, so it's like, it's a, anyway. The goal is to read. I have had a daily reading streak for 72 days. That's right, 72 days, daily reading streak. Uh, Japanese study 21 days, caffeine after 4, 54 days. 
Uh, that means no caffeine after four. Have I journaled in Japanese? No. Have I sketched? No. Have I meditated? No. So those three habits are bad. Um, the goal is just to read. That's it. If I read five pages a day and get this far, this far, that's okay. I'm not gonna hold it against me. It's also a busy month, but yeah. I could also give some channel updates, but I mean, I don't know. I feel less confident than I did during the last channel update <laughs> about getting videos out. So let this one be this Thursday's video. Next Thursday uh, has to be the parkour video. It's six months overdue. My original goal with releasing it was to have something to look back on for when I moved, but then didn't end up moving and now I probably am. So yeah, thanks for watching this reading ramble or, or listening if you did. I mean, it's probably a little, runs a little long, but let me know what you're reading down below, of course. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have much of a fan base. I mean, there are definitely some recurring names, so I appreciate you all. Um, that is all. Have a good one, and as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you on Thursday.